Hey all you gaming wizards, welcome to the next chapter of Super Mario World, starring yours truly, Windstreak. Today we're diving into the magical world of scene transitions, sprinkled with a few extra nuggets of wisdom. Now let's get down to business with some snappy adjustments. First up we're giving Mario a more dramatic exit, with a death animation. Now ordinarily we just slap this new animation right into the Mario object, but using the Mario object would bring along all the code and behaviors that are tied to it. So we'll be creating a whole new object, Dead Mario. And this is just one animation, and just like that, we're on to the next. And speaking of things that need a makeover, my background. It's just terrible. Literally looks like it was drawn by a cucumber. So I whipped up a fresh new background. And we can effortlessly drop a new animation under the old one, keeping all the fancy code and behaviors. Then on our scene, we simply change it to the new animation, and voila, a fresh new look. So our background's looking slick. But our new friend, Dead Mario, needs a bit of code magic. Time to dive into the coding realm. Since we already have a few spots of code that zaps Mario when he meets his demise, we can just go ahead and piggyback off that. There's two prime spots. One is Koopa's collision, and the other is in the Goomba collision. And in both of these, right before we banish Mario to the digital abyss, we're pulling a little switcheroo. Enter the stage, Dead Mario. We'll set this freshly created character at Mario's X and Y coordinates, and then we'll kickstart a timer. And I'll be calling this up and down. Now, buckle up for the Mario death events. In a new group, we're slapping on three conditions, all riding on the rhythm of the up and down timer. For the first act, less than 0.3 seconds, we're sending dead Mario sky high with a negative 90 degree angle at a brisk 35 instant pickles. 35 instant pixels, keeping it constant. Then as the timer hits the 0.35 second mark, or greater than, Q Act 2, Dead Mario takes a nosedive with a 90 degree angle, accelerating at a cool 35 permanent pixels. And this will continue to gain speed. And for the grand finale, after 2.5 seconds, Dead Mario exits stage left, aka Delete Dead Mario. We're giving him the hook and changing the scene to our current scene's name, restarting the level. And down the road, this last code snippet has room for a bit of extra mojo, swiping a life from your stash and doing a quick check before deciding if you get to go back to the game or to the continue screen. But for now, we're keeping it simple. Rinse, repeat, conquer that level. And now that our Mario universe is firing on all cylinders, let's dive into the piece de resistance of today's tutorial. The seamless leap from one level to the next. Enter the flagpole, or in this version of Mario, a majestic stick flanked by two other sticks. But to sound like we know what we're talking about, we'll call one of them the finish bar and the other two finish poles. We're gonna want Mario to look like he can walk in between the poles. And here we'll have Z levels to the rescue. We're gonna go ahead and set one of the poles to Mario Z level minus one, the other to Mario Z level plus one. And the finish bar we can set to Mario Z level. This can all be handled at the beginning of the scene condition. And this makes sure it only kicks off one time. Now we're going to need a way to move the bar up and down between the poles. First, we will give the bar a boolean variable called up. If this is set to true, we will move the bar, yep, you guessed it, up. And when it's set to false, the bar will move down. Next, we will put two points on our finish poles, one near the top and one near the bottom. And now anytime the bar's y-axis is equal to or greater than our bottom point, because remember, the y-axis number gets larger as you go downwards. Then we'll change the boolean up to true. And anytime the bar's y-axis is equal to or less than our top point, then we'll change it to false. And this allows the bar to bounce up and down along the poles. And now we have our stage set for Mario to be able to complete a level. Now hold on to your controllers because once Mario gives that finish bar a high five, we have one last stretch of code that we need to tackle. First, we're going to want Mario to gracefully walk forward while the stage fades out. To achieve this, I have crafted a solution. Picture a large, solid black object discreetly positioned off to the side. When Mario makes contact with that bar, the black canvas is swiftly relocated to Mario's position. We set its opacity to zero and then smoothly fade it in. So we're going to need a timer. Enter the new map timer. It kicks off the moment Mario and the finish bar cross paths. While this timer is ticking away, Mario takes a leisurely stroll forward, savoring the victory. We're setting a new max horizontal speed for our hero, maxing it out at 25 pixels. 
Now Mario is doing his own thing, so we're going to put a lid on user input. No wild maneuvers from the player, we're ignoring default controls and forcing simulate input right. And all this magic is going to unfold until the new map timer hits that sweet spot. Once we've met that perfect moment, it's showtime. Change the scene to your new masterpiece and the curtain falls on one level and the stage is set for his next adventure. Well, fellow gamers, that wraps up today's video on scene settings, but fear not. Our next episode is gearing up to tackle the intricate world of multiple scenes and the magic of global variables. Now, if you've enjoyed these gaming adventures and want to spread some love, here's your chance to join my channel membership. Get your hands on exclusive badges, handcrafted emojis, a shout out in my upcoming videos, hey, listen. and most importantly, my eternal gratitude. It's a priceless package valued at a jaw-dropping $10 billion, but can be yours for just $2.99 a month. But hey, Showing some love doesn't have to break the bank. Comments, likes, subs are just as cherished and won't cost you a dime. Winky face. Yep, it was in the script. Had to say it. Till next time. Peace.